Section 8.8 is going to do a lot of work with rational expressions. We're going to put rational expressions, which is fancy mathematics speak for fractions, in the lowest terms. We're going to add, subtract, multiply, and divide rational expressions. So let's start our work with rational expressions with a problem like number 26. And it's just a reminder of something that I hope you're comfortable with and know that in working with rational expressions, they're not always defined. So if we have f of x is 8 over x minus 1, that expresses a nice rule for x, what to do with x, but I can't just use any value of x. There's a value of x that's going to create some problems. What value of x is going to create some issues here? Well, I can't let the denominator equal 0, so where does that happen? Well, when x equals 1. So x equal 1 is what I don't want in terms of my function. So the domain of this function, which is the set of x values that you can put into the function, the domain is everything except 1. So you could write it as x not equal to 1. Or you can write it as negative infinity to 1, union 1 to infinity. And if you notice, I was using parentheses around the 1. So I'm not including 1 itself. It's everything but 1. If you were to look in the book, you might see this expression somehow wrapped up in some more fancy mathematics notation. It looks like this. This is really saying the same thing. It's a little more fancy. It's the set of x such that x is not equal to 1. I'm okay with you writing it like this. It's a little bit less formal, but that's all right. Let's try another one like that. Problem number 28. 2x plus 1. Excuse me. f of x is 2x plus 1 over x squared minus 2x. Now, as far as the domain of this is concerned, we're going to run into a similar problem here that we ran into with the last one. That is, we can't let the denominator equal 0. So the question is, where does x squared minus 2x equal 0? How are we going to figure that out? Suggestions. What can we do to figure out where x squared minus 2x equals 0? All right, let's factor this out. You can factor out a GCF, x times x minus 2. Okay. If you take a close look at what we have, you've got something times something else equals 0. So if two things multiply to give you 0, one of those has to have been 0. So either x equals 0 or x minus 2 equals 0, but that happens when x equals 2. Now, are those are the two values we want to put in the function, or do we want to avoid those? Avoid. Good. So, we want to avoid these. Our domain is x not equal 0, x not equal 2, or negative infinity to 0, union 0 to 2, union 2 to infinity. I'm happy with the first of these. Write that or this. Okay, so a little bit of practice with the domain. And let's, let's start actually working with our rational functions in terms of putting things in lowest terms. So we'll do one or two examples like this, starting with problem number 36. Fifteen a to the fifth, b to the fourth, over 21 a squared, b to the fifth. Now, as far as putting this in lowest terms is concerned, 
since everything is being multiplied in both the numerator and denominator, I can do some cancellation. So let's see what things we can cancel, how we can cancel them. Let's start out front. Is there anything in common to the coefficients that I can cancel? Yeah, good. Three goes into both of these, here five times, here seven times. How about the a's? Do you remember what the rule is when you're dividing things with the same base? What do you do with their exponents? Subtract. So this will cancel. What will I be left with? Yeah, I'll be left with three of them. So it'll be a to the third, and that'll be in the numerator. Now we can do the same thing here. You could subtract, and that'd be fine. 4 minus 5 would be negative 1. So there's, there's nothing really wrong with 5a to the third, b to the negative first. But I tend to prefer positive exponents. So let's take that term and put it in the denominator. When we move it to the denominator, its exponent becomes positive. It changes signs. Now there is kind of a shortcut that you could do here. Instead of doing this and then moving the, the exponent to make it positive, why don't you just subtract the smaller from the larger? 5 minus 4 gives you b to the first power and leave it in the denominator. So that's a different way to do it. I think it's a little bit more efficient. Oh, thank you. Yeah, there's a 7 in the bottom. Thank you. Okay, so are we all set on 36 there? Let's try some more. I think problem number 38. x squared plus 6x plus 9 over 2x plus 6. Now a lot of these are really, really tempting. It's really, really tempting to want to cancel, say, 2x into 6x. Is it 2x squared? Really? Oh, all right. 2x squared plus 6x. Thank you. A lot of times it's really tempting to want to cancel things, like there's an x squared here and cancel the x squared there, but you can't. When you're adding things up, you kind of have to regard this as being in a big parenthesis, like that. And you can't cancel into that parenthesis. These terms are married. It's a mathematical union. If you break up that marriage, I'm going to write homewrecker all over your test. Don't do it. You can't, can't write, uh, you can't cancel into this now. But what we can do and what you should do is factor these things. So let's look at the numerator. How can we factor the numerator? Thank you. x plus 3 times x plus 3. Now on a test, I hope you wrote that as x plus 3 squared. But here we don't need to worry about that because we're not done here. How about the denominator? What can we do in the denominator? All right, let's factor out a 2x. What's that leave behind? x plus 3. And here's where the fun part begins, right? You can take out your favorite Zorro pen and go, ole. Cancel those out. Because those are common to both the numerator and denominator. They can reduce to 1. So we're left with x plus 3 over 2x. Can I go any farther? No, that's it. Because the x and the 3, that's one whole term, so I can't cancel that x into that x, because I'd be canceling into that parentheses. So it's as far as we can go there. Now this first problem illustrates a lot of what 
you're going to have to worry about in this section. That is, when you're trying to reduce these expressions, whether they're by themselves or multiplying or dividing, you have to factor these things first, period. So factor first. That's what you're going to have to keep in mind as you do problems the rest of the way. Please. Uh, you could. I don't think you want to take the time in general to do that. It would make this problem a lot longer. Yeah. And then it's, it's going to be more challenging when the problems change a little bit, like problem number 50. So let's take a quick look at problem number 50 then. So a plus 6 over a squared minus 16 times 3a plus, excuse me, 3a minus 12 divided by 3a plus 18. So again, it's really, really tempting to want to cancel the 3a's or cancel out the 6 out of the 12 and the 18. But you can't. These terms are joined. So if you want, it's not a bad idea to put parentheses around these things and remind yourself that you can't cancel into that parenthesis. So what else can we do? Well, we can factor. So how's the denominator of that first term factor? a plus 4, a minus 4. And then the numerator over here, I should be able to get some factorization as well. What can I factor out of this one? 3. 3 times a minus 4, and likewise 3 times a plus 6. Wow. All right. I think we're set up for a lot of fun here. Let's see what we can do. What terms are common to both the numerator and denominator? All right, a minus 4. That one cancels. Good, the 3. 3 cancels as well. And a plus 6. Good, our last one, a plus 6. So, wow, what's left? Yeah, you have to be careful. I think a couple voices picked that up. That is, there's nothing left in the numerator, so you have to put a 1 as kind of like a placeholder. So 1 over a plus 4. Now, if things were reversed and everything canceled out of the denominator and I had a plus 4 left in the numerator, I don't have to write divided by 1. But in this case, you have to have that 1 as the numerator. All right, that's a good example of the kind of things you can expect in this section. How are we looking on problem 50? Good there? All right. Let's try problem number 56. So 2ax minus 10x minus a plus 5 times x over x squared minus, or x over x minus 2x squared. Hmm. Well, one thing's for sure, we're going to have to spend some time factoring this. Any ideas as to how to even get started factoring something like that? Kennedy? Any suggestions as to what to do there? Mm, like from the first two? All right. Um, I'm not sure we need to rearrange them too much. I think we can probably get away with it here. So we'll take out the x. Is there anything else I could take out? A 2. So let's take out a 2x, and that's going to be behind what? x minus 5, right? 
Oh, A minus 5. Thank you. A minus 5. Thank you. A minus 5. Uh, how about on the second term? Let's factor out a minus 1. Now, the reason to factor out the minus 1 is that that's going to change the sign on both of those terms so that these terms match right here. If you didn't factor out that minus 1, then we couldn't complete the factor by grouping. So a minus 5 times what? 2x minus 1. Good. Times x. How about the denominator there? How's that going to factor? Factor out the x, which leaves behind 1 minus 2x. one minus two x and I guess there's one more thing I'll do here let's write a one underneath that and it's just to try and keep things lined up so that I can cancel numerator to denominator and vice versa um, what do you see that can cancel X's will cancel and these two look really, really close and tempting. Bailey? I'm just curious, why is it a 1? Like 1 minus 2x? Well, we factored out the x. You, you need to leave kind of a placeholder. If you distribute this, x times 1 would give me the x. x times 2x gives me the 2x squared. So we need to leave that 1 as kind of like a placeholder there. Appreciate the question. Thank you. I can't quite cancel these out just yet. Um, or I can, but it doesn't just cancel into a 1 because they're not exactly the same, are they? What's the difference between these two? It's, yeah, it's kind of the sign. So I'll give you two ways to do this. You can, if you wanted to, just factor out a negative from there. Now, if I factor out the negative, do you remember what happens when you factor out a negative? changes the sign. So that's going to be a positive 2x. Let me write that here. And that'll be a negative 1. Let me write that there. So, all right, there's a lot that went on in that one. So <clears throat> let me slow it down again. If you factor out a negative 1 from this, so here it is kind of uh, with an extra step. If I factor out a negative 1, that's going to make this negative and this positive. And then I can change the order on those. Write it as 2x minus 1. Now we did a lot of work there so that we can finally cancel this thing. If you cancel it, we're left with yeah, the negative sign, which I'll write out front, a minus 5. You don't have to distribute that negative sign. It's okay if you don't. But either way, your, your answer, your final answer is going to be like this. Now, that does bring to mind kind of a shortcut that I'll let you guys take. And it works in situations like this. If you have a minus b over b minus a. That is two things that are kind of very, very similar, but the opposite order. When you have two things like this, this simplifies down to a negative 1. So right, right up here, when I did this, I could have canceled that and just written negative 1. So that's an alternative if you want to write it like that, if you're comfortable with that. A lot of people aren't, so you know whatever works for you. Let's move into division. Is there any more that you'd like me to say on problem 56 here? Jamie? So, 
So, so really when I canceled here, I'd be left with a minus 5 over negative 1. But I could write that negative 1 out in front uh, as opposed to dividing by negative 1. So if you multiply by negative 1 or divide by negative 1, it's the same. So that's what we did is we uh, moved that negative up to the numerator. And would you take that on the way down the negative? Like that? Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, the important thing is you see that you get the cancellation of negative 1. Yes? Sure, sure. Let's do one more multiplication. Thanks. Let's do a similar one to what we just did. Let's do problem number 54. So we've got 10n minus n squared times n to the sixth over uh, n cubed minus 10n squared minus 2n plus 20. So what I would suggest is that you regard this as being over 1. The book's not going to write it like, like that, but it helps keep things lined up. And then we need to factor things. So start with the numerator. How's that going to factor? n times 10 minus n. Now for the denominator... Uh, a little bit more work there. So I'll let you work on that one. And if you're at home, there you go. A little TV timeout, right? All right, so uh, let me zoom out a little bit in case you haven't got the problem down. And I'll walk around and try and help out.
six. Okay. So see how our new little timeout system here works. Over here, I need to factor by grouping. So let's look at the first pair. What can I factor out of n cubed minus 10 n squared? What's common? n squared, good. So n squared times n minus 10. How about the second pair? What can I factor out? Negative two, good. So let's just factor out the negative two. If you accidentally factored out just a positive two, it's not gonna work. Let me show you real quickly and don't copy this down. If you factor out a positive two, it would leave behind negative n plus 10. And these are opposite in sign. This and this don't have the same signs. So to fix that, you look at this and say, you know what, I need to factor out a negative two. And that's what's gonna work. So negative two times n minus 10, that works. What's nice about that is that these terms both match. So you know you're on the right track. You can keep, keep going with your factor by grouping. So that's n minus 10 times n squared minus 2. So that's how that denominator factors. Let's put it all together now. Okay, so n times 10 minus n over 1, n to the 6 over n minus 10 times n squared minus 2. So that's the factorization we get. This is a good follow-up to the one we just did because of the cancellation that we get. That cancellation is right here. But it doesn't cancel as just 1. What happens when I do this cancellation? Get negative 1. So let's just write negative 1 up here. And then we've got n times n to the 6. n times n to the 6 is n to the 7th. So a negative n to the 7th over n squared minus 2. How's that one looking? Does that help out with uh, the multiplication here? Uh, that's my habit to always put it on top. Like it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, well, it's always negative one when you have something that follows this pattern. That is the same numbers, just kind of in reverse order, opposite signs. That's going to cancel as negative one. But as far as where you write that, um, let me let me just address it this way. If I wrote negative eight over four or the negative of 8 over 4, or 8 over negative 4. So there's three different choices of where I write that negative sign. No matter what, they're all equal to negative 2. So out of convenience, I usually put the negative sign in the numerator or the denominator. Yeah, if this was 10 plus n, yeah, that's, a, that's an excellent question. If I had a plus b over b plus a, if they were the same signs but both positive, well, then I could just change the order on this, a plus b over a plus b, and that's 1. So, yeah, you get this because they're opposite in order and in sign. So, yeah, appreciate the question. Anything else on problem number 50? Was, it, was that 50 or 50? It was 54. Yeah. I wrote 50. Yeah. So it was problem 54. Okay. So division is not going to require us to change a whole lot. Let's take a look at problem 58. And let me give you one reminder for division. And that is dividing fractions. If you have A over B divided by uh, C over D, oops, by 
c over d. What happens when you divide things like this, when you divide by a fraction? Yeah, thank you. Multiply by the reciprocal. So the only difference between this and multiplication is we're going to start out with this step. Multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. You don't take the reciprocal of the first fraction, just the second one. Well, we'll start this with problem 58. A to the fourth, B over 14, divided by A to the third, B to the second, over 21. Okay. Well, start by taking the reciprocal of the second fraction. 21 over A cubed B squared. Can I do any cancellation here? Absolutely. Everything in the numerator and everything in the denominator is being multiplied. So cancel away. Let's start with uh, 7 going into 14 and 21, 2 and 3 times respectively. How about the A's? What can I do there? Subtract. 4 minus 3 is 1, so let me just write A to the first up here. How about the B's? Dylan? Yeah. 2 minus 1. So that one's gone. I'm just left with 1B in the denominator. So overall, 3A over 2B. That wasn't too bad. Let's move on to problem number 60. A squared minus 9 over A squared minus 49. divided by a plus 3 over a plus 7. Now to start this one off, I'm just going to do the invert and multiply part. Some of you, if you're really confident or really in a hurry, can also start factoring. Oops, so this should be a times now. times a plus 7 over a plus 3. I've got to figure out a way to make that time out a little bit longer. Let's factor the numerator. a plus 3 times a minus 3. And likewise, the denominator, a plus 7 times a minus 7 times a plus 7 over A plus 3. So your factoring from earlier in this chapter is coming back at you. You still have to know how to factor even though we moved on past the first test. The A plus 3's cancel. The A plus 7's cancel. And I'm left with A minus 3 over A Minus 7. Thank you. Can I cancel the A's? No. That's it. It's as far as we can go there. That A is really, because you're subtracting the 3, you have to regard that as one whole term. Because these aren't exactly the same, 
like the a plus 7 and a plus 7, I can't cancel into that. You can't cancel into a parenthesis. Now, it's typically not going to be written with a parenthesis like that, but and you can remember that they are technically surrounded by parentheses, and you can't break up that union. Rhonda? No, A minus 3. Is that helpful? All right. You're welcome. Anything else on 68? Let's try. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this is in lowest terms. You're basically getting rid of any common factors. I mean, it's it's really a glorified version of, say, 24 over 36 and saying, oh, well, I could write that as 2 times 12 over 3 times 12 and then cancel out the 12s. So you're just putting these things in lowest terms is what you're doing. And you do that by canceling out whatever is common to numerator and denominator. All right, so let's do one more division one. Problem 62. Six M minus eight over nine M cubed. Divided by 27m cubed minus 64. Over 9m plus 9. So as before, the first step is to invert and multiply. So it's going to be 6m minus 8 over 9m cubed times... 9m plus 9 over 27m cubed minus 64. So here's where you get to do some factoring. I'll give you a chance to work on that. I'll give you a little bit of a hint on this one. This one I'm going to factor is the difference of cubes.
Okay, so the difference of cubes is always rough, but let's start out with the easier part. In the numerator here, the first thing you should always try is to factor out the GCF. In this case, the GCF is 2. 3m minus 4. Not much we can or need to do in the denominator, so we'll just leave that as 9m cubed. How about the numerator of the second fraction? Anything we can do here? Take out the 9, m plus 1. Now the denominator here is the difference of cubes. So for those of you who thought the nightmare was over, sorry, it's not. Still have to work with that formula. What do you cube to get the first term? 3m. What do you cube to get 64? 4. Now once you have those two terms, use those two terms to get the remaining three terms. So we'll take 3m times 3m, which is 9m squared. 4 times 4 is 16, so I multiply the first by itself, the second by itself, and I got these two terms. To get the middle term, what do I get to, what do I have to do to get that middle term? Multiply them together. 3m times 4 gives me 12m. What am I missing? Same sign, opposite sign, always positive. So minus, plus, and plus. Whew. All right. So the big chore in that one is to get it factored. Let me pause if there's something about the factorization that is giving you trouble. Yay, now the fun part, right? Cancellation. Hasta la vista, baby. Nines cancel. Anything else is going to cancel. Yeah, 3m minus 4. I think that's pretty much it, isn't it? Looks like it to me. So what are we left with? We're left with 2 times m plus 1 over... Yeah, you can distribute this or not if you want. I'm just going to leave the m cubed factored out front m cubed times 9m squared plus 12m plus 16. Yay. How are we looking on problem 62? Mitchell? Um, well, the factorization you gave me didn't sound right. I mean, there's really only one way to factor this. You can't really work this into the difference of squares. So if you have some trick that, that works out for you, that's okay, but it's not the difference of squares. Yeah. Bailey? You can leave it like this. You don't have to distribute it. Actually kind of like not distributing it in the denominator because later when we start working with addition and subtraction of fractions then it's it's nice to have the denominator factored so the numerator um numerator you can just leave it like that that's fine for right now do you want to like distribute this and you write 2m plus 2 or Okay. Uh, I, I would like it written as one, one fraction like that. Mitchell, did you, you have a follow-up or something? Like, like you're still brooding on that, like, wait a minute, something doesn't sound right. Um, if I misheard you or misspoke or something like that. Um, okay. All right. Uh, let's take a quick break here because uh, this is a long section, and we're coming up to the more challenging part. So take a quick break here.